All right, everybody, I have Jasmine with us. Um, we'll get started with questions from Tukmi Nguyen. Tukmi, go ahead. Hi, Jasmine, welcome to LA. We, we see that you've uh, made it here. Hi, thank you. Sorry, so what I, was your reaction? I don't Sorry. see who's speaking. Like it's not switching on the screen. You know what I mean? I have you stopped me. Oh, okay, that's fine. So I just can't see you. I hear you. Oh, okay. Well, we can see you at least. That's the most important okay. thing. <laughs> so what was your reaction to uh, hearing that you would be heading to LA? Um, I was actually excited. Um, I feel like this is a great opportunity. I obviously played uh, seven of my last seasons under Coach Kurt Miller and with Chris Kalanis. So there's some history there, good relationship there, had a lot of success there. And just the opportunity to be in LA and play with the organization that has so much history, that means so much to women's basketball and, you know, has three championships. Like it's an honor to be able to play here. So I was super excited. You obviously know Kurt really well. Um, like, what do you think he can bring and his staff can bring uh, to this franchise? Is it kind of, um, is apparently the word rebuild isn't very popular, but just it, it's really looking to kind of get back to some of its glory days. I haven't been to the playoffs in two straight years. Yeah, I mean, because we're building. I heard you say like rebuild isn't too popular. We are building, we're putting pieces together talented pieces together, all stars, like, a, you know, there's Olympians, there's, you know, we have a talented team with expectations. So I feel like it isn't necessarily rebuild. It is building something, building a culture, building, um, you know, a, a winning attitude and mindset with great people and good character. So that's what we're putting together here. Kurt has done that before. Um, when I started with him in Connecticut, it was a similar situation. And then you know, playing under him, we had a lot of success, but that's winning, that's, you know, finals experiences, that's being in the playoffs consistently, that being the expectation is that we make the playoffs. Um, and, you know, just also individual success. Like I was an all-star, I was three-time defensive, like I achieved a lot of my individual goals under him and so did a lot of other players. So I feel like he's proven that he knows how to do that. And um, I'm excited to, to be able to do that again with him. Great, we'll go next question to Sabrina Merchant. Sabrina, go ahead. Sabrina, what up? Hey. My Dukey. <laughs> yeah, what's up? <laughs> a lot of Duke on this call today. We got to talk to Lexi earlier too. Yeah. Uh, uh, she actually mentioned that you uh, really gave her um, some difficulties when she was in Connecticut training camp, just guarding her all the time. <laughs> and she like you really kicked her butt. I'm curious what you remember about Lexi at that point and how you've seen her develop over the last four or five years. Um, I mean, it was just a younger Lexi, you know, when you have experience in the league, when you've had different, you've had adversity, you've dealt with different playing styles and different situations, you want a championship, like, obviously, you mature in a lot of ways, both, you know, personally, professionally, on the court, off the court. So it's been exciting for me to just watch her journey and how she's you know, blossomed and come into her own and being confident. She has an amazing skill set, terrific shooter. So I've always been kind of cheering her on from afar. So I'm excited to actually get to play with her again, um, her rookie season. She mentions me like defending her. That's kind of something that I just always did. Like, you know, when whenever training camp comes, it's like a time to set the tone. This is what the expectation is. This is the culture. This is the how we want to look defensively and me being a defensive player, I would set that tone in training camp. So I'm sorry that that is like a, a, a bad memory she has, but now we're on the same side again. So it's good. Uh, also speaking of setting that tone, like how do you see yourself as sort of like an extension of Kurt, you know, on the court and how is it going to be different here versus what you guys had in Connecticut? Um, I mean, you know, things change. You have to adapt based off of personnel. So obviously it's a, we're, we're building a team here. It's going to be a, a different um, group of people that's together, but I do feel like I know him well. I know his X's and O's. I've been, you know, part of his system and what he brings uh, to the WNBA for a while now. So I'm comfortable in that. And, you know, uh, Chris has, was a defensive philosophy person for us too. He kind of organized that. So that kind of relationship between them, I feel like I fit into that with them and I'm able to help them kind of teach that here or, or bring those principles here. Um, but also I think, like I said, with it being a, a different organization, a different um, 
personnel, there will be adjustments. There will be things that will be new for me too. I think uh, you always have to adjust and innovate based off of the situation. So there'll be some things that I'll be learning too. Thanks, Jazz. We'll go next question to Mark Schindler. Mark, go ahead. Hey, Jazz. It's good to see you. Um, first of all, I wanted to ask, you know, how's how's your knee feeling? How's how's recovery been? Uh, my knee is feeling good. Recovery has been great. You know, it's not always linear. So there's some tough days and then there's some great days. Um, but I feel good about it. I, I, I'm in a good place, was able to, you know, do all my physical and testing stuff here and just feel really good about the care and the resources that I'm able to have here with the Los Angeles Spikes. So I'm in a good, I'm in a good place. I'm really glad to hear that. I'm excited to watch you again. Um, but then, you know, going off that as well, you listed, you know, some of the awesome things you did in Connecticut, uh, headed to a new place in Los Angeles. What things are you really hoping to establish or build on here? Um, I mean, first and foremost, like being myself, I think that is something that speaks for me and part of why they're excited to have me here is that I, you know, I'm a professional, I'm a competitor, I'm a leader, I'm, uh, you know, I have had success in this league, I've been a starting point guard, been around for now, this would be my 13th season, so just bringing that experience and that leadership alongside of, like, NECA, I'm just extremely excited to, like, be able to play with her and be around her and soak up all the greatness that she is, um, so just being myself and uh, being authentic in that, but also just being in a, you know, a big market where, you know, I've been doing a lot of things in my career to this point, both on the court and off the court. So the opportunities that players have here, I, I want to be able to, to tap into all of that. And it starts with the success on the court first. Awesome. Thank you. We'll go next question to Howard Megdal. Howard, go ahead. Jazz, great to chat with you and congratulations. Um, you, you talked about this, but obviously an important piece of your offseason has been promotion as well. And I just I just wonder how different your experience as a WNBA player has felt, not only being part of the WNBA promotional piece, but also doing it here in L.A. If there's been something that sort of stuck out to you as feeling like this is higher profile, this is a bigger part of the culture than it's been. Uh, when you say promotion, what do you mean by that? Like just growing I, I, promoting the WNBA like being yeah, a, and, and working on behalf of the league in order to okay. um, yeah yeah so so in that way and doing it obviously here in LA um I mean it's just it's a huge market obviously uh there's a, a lot of brand opportunity here a lot of like relationships here and what I mentioned before just the history and the success of the LA Sparks it's a it's a huge organization where you know there's a it's significant to the W it's a you know you want it you come here to have those opportunities, to have that success, to be a part of that history and, you know, to, to continue that legacy. I appreciate it. Thank you. We'll go to Jackie Ray next and then John W. Davis. Jackie Ray, go ahead. Hey, Jazz, I know you can't see me, but- I can um, see you, actually. Oh, you, you can, can see, okay. John, I, oh, that's, I can only see you. All right, well, me and John are special, uh, <laughs> I guess. Um, I'm hoping you can continue to find dope hairstylists out here because your hair is always fly. So I have to oh, compliment thanks. you on that. You always got that crown. But with the fami familiarity you have with um, Lexi, Kurt, and, and you guys have already seemed to kind of debunk the rebuild phrase. And, and I think that's that mutual respect. But as far as our fan base here, they're definitely thinking, okay, we're in a rebuild. We're kind of starting over. How do you think this new team can really speak to the fan base and really give them the confidence that we're kind of turning the corner to get back to that legacy that is the LA Sparks? Um, I mean, just knowing that all of us want to be here. I think that is a huge part of the W everywhere is that you want people representing your community, representing your organization, playing on your team that want to be here, that want to be successful, that want to give back to the fans and make an impact on the court and off of it. I think that's a huge piece of it. And that's what they're getting. That's what we're working on. And that's what we have. So um, for me, I feel like if you're a fan, just just get to know us, study us, see what we've accomplished, see who we are, know who we, who we are as professionals and as players. And, you know, there's a there's a chance to build that relationship there too. So I think that's kind of where it starts. Perfect. Very glad you're here and thank you. <laughs> we'll go next question to John W. Davis. John, go ahead. Good morning, Jasmine. Quick question for you. What type of perspective do you have on the, the physical and emotional hard work that it takes to recover from a major injury like you're doing right now? Um, I mean, 
I think it's mental more than everything. Uh, I feel like from the initial moment that you have that injury, just trying to process all that that is like, it's a lot. And, uh, you know, if, even when recovery feels like it's getting easier, then it's time to move on to that next phase where it just gets back harder again. It's a bunch of like build you up and then break you down, build you up and break you down until you ultimately get to where you want to be. So I think it is for me, definitely one of the hardest situations I've ever been through, but the amount of growth that I've had as a person, um, just tapping into resources to help me with this process. And that's physically, mentally, and emotionally, as well as just I don't know, growing off the court, uh, I feel like it also puts things into perspective as a professional athlete that any day you could not be able to do this anymore. So so what else do you have to lean on? What other thing, you know, I've always been someone that's active in the community, but just tapping into some other things that I could possibly do after basketball, I've never had the opportunity to do that playing year round until now. So I think there's some rewarding parts of it, but it's definitely it it challenges you and it forces you to grow in a lot of ways you didn't know you needed to. Great. Um, in the essence of time, we have time for one more question. So we'll wrap up with Tarika Foster. Tarika, go ahead. Hey, Jazzy, how are you? Hey. <laughs> um, you know, thinking back on last season and, you know, I covered you extensively last season, um, not being able to finish the season the way you want it to and then playing on the team that wasn't able to um, win the WNBA finals, even though it was so close. It just feels like there are so many different storylines from you that could be the motivating factor for you coming into this season. Is there anything in particular that you feel like really is that motivational push behind you to want to continue being such a success for this on a new team, aside from you just being the you know consummate professional that you are? Um, for me, it's just that competitiveness and that hunger. Like I want to be healthy. I want to be me. I want to be better than I was before. Like I am definitely chasing like a, you know, I think anyone coming off of a major injury would feel that way. Like you're just chasing something individually that just puts you back on the court doing what you love to do. So that has been kind of my off season and my focus, but having the opportunity to be in LA and in this organization and make an impact and be part of something special, that is, that excites me, that that also motivates me, that makes me that much more anxious to get out there, be with my team um, and just get started. Thanks, Jazz. All righty, great. Thank you so much, Jasmine, really appreciate it. Um, Want to give a special yeah. shout out to all of the media. Thank you for your time today. Uh, thank you to KB, Kurt, Lexi, Dierica. I don't know if I can leave. Can I move? You can leave. You can leave, Jess. Thank you. Um, really appreciate you guys spending some time with us this morning.